with you my 2021 minimalism intentions or goals or whatever you want to call them. If you watched my 20 things I learned in 2020, you'll know that the 20th thing I learned is to have a, or to follow a value-based life over a goal-based life. So although I do set goals for myself, I don't hold on to them so tightly. Instead, I ensure that the goals that I have fit the values and ensure that I'm following the value that I hold um, instead of just the, the concrete goal. So I think this year in 2020, I have really made minimalism kind of more top priority. It's something that I really began to value in 2020 and want to carry that and develop that further because I have found it to be super helpful in my life. Before we get started in the video, I just want to welcome anybody new here. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, hello, my name is Julia and I am a wellness coach in training and I make videos all about managing anxiety, self-improvement and really just going after that life that you want. So ensure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in that content and follow along for more videos. Okay, so let's jump into the very first thing which is to have a no spend month. Now, I actually didn't start this in like this month, but it really can be any month. It doesn't have to be in January just because it's the beginning of the year. I want to do this challenge a cup for a couple months actually because I really want to save money this year as I am planning on hopefully getting my own place come the end of the year. So my goal is to save a lot of money so i'm going to try to not spend any money on anything besides necessities um, such as your food your bills all of that stuff i think this is really going to help me not only with saving money but just like uh, appreciating what i have and using what i have and just being grateful for that the second intention I have is to be more eco-friendly. So this was something I started in 2020. I just started to experiment with more eco-friendly products, cruelty-free products, and just products that are overall better for the environment and are more ethical. So I started to do my research more about uh, certain products and certain brands and started to kind of phase out the stuff that I was using that wasn't really sustainable or wasn't cruelty free or just good for the environment. I still used those products until they were done, I just didn't repurchase them. And I want to go into 2021 with the same mindset, but even being more so. I just want to continue to do my research on certain products before I decide to buy them. I already tried it with laundry detergent and found a very good sustainable laundry detergent that I love. Same with the deodorant this year. And moving into this new year, I want to find cleaning, household cleaning products that are non-toxic and better for the environment and maybe look into making my own. Um, as well as reducing the plastic that I'm using and finding alternative ways to store stuff without plastic wrap and just small things like that that I can do to be more sustainable in my life. Number three is to have no screen time or limit screen time. Um, so this is something I, I feel like a lot of my <laughs> Um, intentions this year or just to like master what I started in 2020 but this is another one of those things where I wouldn't look at my phone first thing in the morning so that's something I actually did really good on this year um, of course I'm human so there was a couple times where I did but I would really just focus on my morning routine and then look at my phone afterwards but for me personally, still seeing what my screen time is at the end of the week kind of makes me just like think about like what I'm doing and why I'm spending that much time on my phone. And so I want to bring that down. And I feel like I did bring it down from even previous years when screen time wasn't even available to us, but I really want to bring that down and almost have like a full day where I'm not on any 
kind of screen or device. And this is going to include TV, tablets, phones, and whatever other gadgets we have nowadays. It just helps to reconnect with yourself, I would say, without the external influences that we see on these devices. So I want to be intentional about that and maybe um, not only not being on my phone first thing in the morning, but being better at getting off my phone in the evening. Um, I do this sometimes, but I'm not 100% at this. So I want to just shut off my phone half an hour or an hour before I want to be sleeping. And then something I want to try is to, whether it's a partial day or a full day, I might start it at a partial day and by the end of the year it could be a full day, but I want Sundays um, to be like a non-device day where I'm not on a device all day or at least off of my phone. Because I do like the comfort of watching a TV show on Sunday or um, a movie. So um, definitely with my phone though. I want to see if I can just like stay off my phone, stay off social media on Sundays. Number four is to do a decluttering challenge. Now I heard about this challenge um, on YouTube actually and I thought this was a really good idea. And I think when I kind of plan to do this is right before I get my own place, um, as that is a really big goal of mine this year. So I want to do like a big declutter the month before and um, have space and just clarity for moving out. So I found this challenge where it's a 30 day decluttering challenge. So on the first day you declutter one item, on the second day you do two items, and then three, then four, etc. And by the end of the month, your last day, you um, are decluttering 30 or 31 items. And then by the end of it, I can't remember exactly how much uh, you, items you've decluttered, but it's like 500 or something like that. And truly, I don't know if I even have that much stuff just because of how much I got rid of um, this or 2020. So we'll see how that goes. But I think it would be like a really cool challenge to do to see if how many things that I, I realize that I don't need to have anymore or not serving a purpose in my life and things that I don't need to repurchase. My fifth goal I want to try to do is to do one thing at a time. I have a tendency to take too much on and just like over schedule. And then I feel overwhelmed and stressed and not productive and all of these things that just make me feel worse. And I think the reason why is I just try to do so many things and think that I have to do all of these things in order to be successful. So I need, I want to just be really aware of that and to catch myself in that thought process before I decide to take another thing on and just try to tell myself that you already have something else going for you. So finish that first, write whatever you want to do next down and come back to it later. I think this is going to be <laughs> a challenge for me because I almost do it on autopilot. Just kind of fill things that I want to um, get done, but they might not always be important at that very moment. But you can always come back to it later when it is of more importance. Something I implemented is to just have three main tasks that I get done every day and if I get those tasks done then I will be satisfied with my days. I think there was a lot of time in 2020 where I was just down or disappointed because I didn't get as much done as I wanted to but I was also over scheduling myself um, at the same time. So I just want to be more intentional about that and just do one thing at a time. Okay, number six is to cook and eat at home more. So because of all the restaurants shutting down, I did a lot more of this in 2020, but I still did order from Skip the Dishes and I truly do not want to see if I tallied everything up, how much 
I would have spent. I know it would be less than previous years, but I think I still wouldn't be happy with the number. So I want to try to experiment more with cooking. I've learned a few recipes this year, which I'm really excited about because I'm not a cook at all, <laughs> but I challenged myself to learn more in 2020 and I want to challenge myself to make two to three new recipes each month. That is my goal and to just eat more at home and just being very intentional of ensuring that I have groceries in the house in order to eat at home because I think a lot of the time when I eat out is because there was no groceries or we hadn't gone grocery shopping so I just want to be very intentional with that and to try to eat and cook more at home. Number seven, I believe, um, I want to choose quality over quantity in all areas of my life. I want to just be better at doing research on products or things that I want and ensuring that they really you know, our quality, but they also fit with my values and what I believe in. This is something I definitely started doing with clothes, and that is to just buy quality pieces that are going to last me long. They might cost a bit more money, but it will be worth it because of how long they actually last you. And again, it goes back to looking at quality brands and just companies that are sustainable and ethical in their practice and in their work. More doesn't always mean better. So it doesn't mean not investing in certain things or buying certain things. It just means choosing the quality of products over the quantity and how many you have of them. But I want to have quality with the people that I have in my life. I want to have quality with the food that I'm eating. I want to have quality with the clothes that I'm wearing, um, the equipment or stuff that I use every day. I just want to be very intentional about the quality of items versus the quantity. With that being said, number eight is to work on getting a capsule wardrobe. So I really want to reduce the amount of clothes that I have um, and focus on maybe purchasing a couple uh, or a couple more quality pieces and looking at my closet for quality pieces that I already own. I want this wardrobe to be very versatile and interchangeable like I can wear this as a comfy outfit or a work outfit and I just want to be better at creating a small wardrobe but a very versatile one. So I'm hoping <laughs> by this time next year that I would have reduced the amount of clothes that I have but love absolutely every single thing that I own. Number nine is I want to have a one in one out policy. So what this means is if I choose to purchase something new such as an article of clothing, a pair of shoes, a piece of artwork, then I have to get rid of something in that same particular area. So if I buy a new shirt, I get rid of one shirt. If I buy a new pair of jeans, I get rid of a pair of jeans. That way I'm not over collecting and I am being very intentional with what I'm buying because I know that if I buy something, I need to also remove something. I think it's a really good way to kind of think about what you're buying and whether you uh, need it or not. And then it also helps you to declutter at the same time. And number 10, my last and final intention is to be content exactly where I am. I think all of us can do this more. I think we spend too much time in our past or in our future worrying about both. 
and we are not finding the simple joys that make us happy right now. It could be the cup of coffee you made. Just sitting there and smelling your coffee. Like people don't realize or don't allow themselves to enjoy that. So just the simple things that make us happy. I just want to be content with where I am and the growth that I'm going through and just value the present moment but that is all for today's video that is the 10 minimalism intentions i have for 2021 if you enjoyed this video make sure to let me know in the comments below and let me know if you have goals or resolutions if you believe in goals or resolutions or what you're hoping for in 2021 Thank you all for watching and I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye.